Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome to War Torn Creative. My name is Tom. I'm joined here by Jared and, of course, the illustrious Gavin. And this time around, we're going to dive into armies. Let's get going with Army Builder. So, Gavin, you here? You've got a nice list. Uh, let's talk. Let's start from the top. Uh, how many points is this list going to be? So, I, I tend to build towards uh, 2,000 points. That's my kind of like sweet spot. Uh, I've been playing for a long time now, so what I like to do is. Uh, rather than build up a, an army over time, is pick a, build a 2,000 point list that can scale down and scale up, and then uh, purchase that army and just go from there. It makes sense, so you have, you have one modular unit, yeah. uh, and we'll dive into the core and some of the supplemental units a, as we go on, but really the first question I gotta ask is, you know, so what kind of army is this? So this is uh, Tyranids, and I like to focus on this, the concept I built this list around is a jaw clunching in on the tabletop. Okay. So from above and uh, below, and then the tongue as well. So there's the tongue. A little bit of tongue A little action. bit of tongue action, because no one doesn't like a little bit of tongue. Sort of like a, a, a dislodged trash compactor just going for it top yeah. down, right? Yeah. So uh, in, in that, we have three components. We have the top jaw, the tongue, and the bottom jaw. And uh, I have a, most of this was based around, in seventh edition, there was a formation uh, I, the Skyblight formation, which had a lot of flying things with wings. Mm -hmm. I really love the models. They kept, if, if they died off, the little guys died off, they would come back. That's not in 8th anymore, but I still really like the models, and I really like the concept of these, a bunch of flying creatures, meeting a bunch of subterranean things that burst out from underground, meeting uh, the leader, the, which is run by the Swarm Lord, uh, on the field at all times. And so Just, that's the tongue. So he's the tongue. So when it comes down to, like you said, you have you sort of multi-pronged attack, you're looking to just squash. So I have things coming up, uh, I have a very small force, but in 8th edition, 50% of my force is on the table at the start. Word. And then, from then on, uh, things come in from above and come in from below, each doing different things. And as that scales up, they get more of either, and the core on the table really doesn't change much. So we've got the idea that you're coming from above, below, and then of course the leader is just going to push forward. Now, that's sort of your approach. Would you consider this uh, an offensive or a defensive arm? Uh, fully, I play like almost 100% offense arms. It's all aggro? I really, I mean, specifically for Tyranids, they play a really, really solid offensive game. There are some more defensive, like ranged builds, like Exocrines and stuff like that. Super strong. Uh, they're very good now, uh, but they haven't been in the past. And honestly, I didn't, I play other armies for that. Tyranids are these big, scary monsters, like rhinoceros bugs. Uh, and I like, yeah, to that theme, I like being this voracious hunger that on the tabletop that just wants to consume everything and move forward. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a little bit of orthos in everybody, in everybody, and there's a concept of sometimes you just want to win, but playing to what the army and the, it feels like is also really important. Oh, yeah, that's super important so. for me because I've been playing for such a long time. I don't play competitively as much or as seriously anymore. Uh, I play match play, but I don't really like go to tournaments anymore. So really what I do when I build a list is just kind of throw everything together and try to do something on the table. Sounds like we're doing that. So why don't we just dive right into the nitty gritty. We've spoken a lot about it. Let's start off with the tongue. Let's go right to the leader. So what we're, what we're leading this list with is the Swarm Lord. And I've been playing this guy because I've loved his rules since uh, fifth edition. Uh, and then uh, using a janky mate, homemade model before they had a good one. Uh, when they eventually released the new Hive Tyrant model, uh, and you could build a Swarm Lord, I immediately built him. I've been running him ever since. He's always been overcosted and never really that good. He usually dies before he does anything, and really, you, I mean, you wiped him off in, a, in one turn of shooting once. Eh, I, he died because of, the, because of the way 6th edition was, yeah. and, but now 8th edition makes that nearly impossible. Yeah, so he is remarkable now. He is only 300 points, and oh my god, is he costed so well. He does 6 damage a swing in close combat. His amount of attacks at full strength is 7. That's unbelievable. He's doing, uh, I think his strength is 8, so he's wounding most vehicles on a 4-up on the heavy vehicles, that yes, is. Heavy. And anything that is less heavy, he's wounding on three up. So he's really got enough, like an incredible offensive ability. He also has an ability which I'm so excited to use in this edition right. that allows him to 
pick a unit or himself within a range and then allow them to take another movement phase. See, that's a really big deal because you're talking about this multi-pronged attack and, and right now it, you sort of set it up where the leader's just going to terminator his way forward and hope he doesn't die. But the fact that he's speeding up the rest of the units so he can just, are also really He can important. do that or he can speed himself up. Yeah. So now he moves, I think, nine inches at full, full strength. strength. Mm -hmm. Yes. Eight, 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 eight is, is a standard hive time. Uh, nine right, is, is a swarm lord. Oh. So swarm lords move in nine and he can go double that in one turn. So if you really want to get across the table to make a charge, you can move 18 inches and just be in someone's face immediately to just meat grinder them. I mean, the Swarm Lord's a dude with five swords, four, four swords in hand and uh, one on his head, the fin on his head. <laughs> but to back that up, I have uh, a three tyrant guard, okay. which are kind of just there to try to keep up with them the best they can. And they have a rule with, as long as they're within three inches of a tyrant or the swarm lord, they can take wounds instead of him. So rather than having him picked off, they can take wounds for him. Literal bodyguards. Yeah, exactly. So that's kind of the core. And then I have a lot of essential, uh, what I'm using for objective grabbers and flankers. And that's the main part of this list because it's, it's built in Vanguard, which is a fast attack focused detachment. Uh, so I use 30 gargoyles, which are three sets of 10. To and those are your aerial units? These are small aerial units, but they stay on the table. They just move really fast. Okay. It's a 12 inch movement. They fly so they can jump over terrain and enemy models. I can get on objectives when I need to, or just have a huge group of 30 bat winged monsters in front of my swarm lord. And so your swarm lord, can he actually speed up those gargoyles as oh, well? Oh yeah, if they want to move 24 inches in a turn, they can do that. So basically the plan here is to go ahead and unleash the swarm lord and let him sort of do his thing. And then as you walk around, you go, okay, gargoyles, get me that objective. And he goes, boom, and it makes him go faster. Yeah. So I, I, he gets things where I need them to be, and that's kind of his thing. He, that's why he's the tongue. He kind of, he, he determines the taste of this list. Uh, that was so bad. That was, that, was, <laughs> that was pretty rough. And so and if, if he's the tongue, then you've got your, your top part, which is the gargoyles. We have a lot of the flying things as well. And there's some, we have a leader for this because every part has a leader. Okay. Uh, the larger the point scales up. So I have a hive tyrant with wings as my second HQ choice. This one uh, flies around with two harpies, which are two other giant flying monstrous mm -hmm. creatures, and a crone, which is another uh, flying monstrous creature that uh, in this case is my anti-air. Right. And right. then there's the two anti-ground. And they all kind of fly around and bully because they move very, very far and uh, can pretty much do whatever they need to be doing, whether that's unloading into people. But in this edition, they're also really good at close combat. So if I need to get to tie something up with something big and scary, I can smash into them. So it sounds like your, your aerial units are very mobile and they're allowed yeah. to go ahead and grab the objectives. Your tyrant is going to really assist that as well. Let's talk about the subterranean units because so far we've got the top and we've got this little tongue thing. I want to get down here. So we have two, in my 2000 point list, I have the base of two uh, Molochs, which are giant, essentially giant mouths on a worm body that burst up and do mortal wounds to models when they come up. They can't charge in the same turn that they come up, which is uh, unique to most things that come right. in off of the board, but uh, they do do damage as soon as they come on that table and they get in really close. They can move it within three inches of a model uh, when they come up. So they can just be in your face and be very scary. Uh, we were talking earlier about how much of a distraction unit they can oh, be. Oh yeah, no, because when they pop up from the ground, they're gonna dish out those mortal wounds. Uh, Which are scary, we found out, when a Psyker does stuff with, a, yeah. with mortal wounds. Oh! Yeah. And so, so it sounds like you have everything covered. You've got the distraction units from the bottom to go ahead and distribute wounds around. You've got your objective grabbers, and then you've got your just big boy in the middle that's gonna speed everybody up. I'm gonna ask you this question, Jared. You're trying to beat him. What's his weakness? How do you beat this army? So, uh, in previous editions for Space Marines, mm -hmm. the answer was grav. Lots and lots of lots and lots of lots and lots of grav. It was really sad because you'd have these giant monsters coming up, and then grav would meet it, Splat. and just they'd turn to goo, yeah. and you're gone. Um, now in Eighth Edition, because all of the monster creatures' wounds went up, they've gotten a little more durable. They've gotten a little more mobile. Uh, They're moving a lot faster now. So we have to start bringing up more weapons to bear that do high damage with a decent amount of AP. Last cannons are going to be Last really good against core Tyranids. Or against these guys. Also things that move really fast yes. because we move fast. Anything that can also keep up with us is in movement. So bikes, 
we've determined or we've uh, watched that they're a lot better despite being yes. costed more. You can move 14 inches each turn, so yeah. you can stay ahead of things if you need to. And with the change to the vehicle rules that we're seeing going into 8th edition, that should also kind of help out players that want to grab more of those bikes. Yes. Well, also, dreadnoughts. Also, dreadnoughts are still going to be a decent answer to dealing with these guys because they are great. Big robot versus big monster smashing into... That's what we want in 40k. Yeah. I, I, the, the two solutions to every big problem is a big gun or a big fist. That yeah. sounds... Absolutely perfect. So you've got the solution with just heavy artillery, AP, uh, heavy AP weapons and stuff, and then of course just go zoom. But just gotta is, go fast. There is one answer that I have in there in this list that's part of it to help deal with this because I've, after seeing Jared wipe me off the table a few times, I decided to kind of answer back to this myself. So I brought in a forge world unit called a Malanthrope, which helps anything that's within three inches of it. It's that gets shot at. It's minus one to hit, so it makes everything that's close to harder to hit. And I have a set of six zone thropes, which are psychic monsters, right. coming in on a what looks like a giant uh, tyrannocyte, giant ball sack, <laughs> tentacle ball sack, fall down, unload them, and now in this edition, zone thropes are doing uh, a smite psychic power, but it's all mortal wounds, and it's they're getting plus three on the base of mortal wounds that they're doing if they're over four, and that's I have six. So I'm doing a lot of mortal wounds when they come in, so anything that's a little too scary, and maybe hurting me a little more, I have this option to drop it in from the sky and take care of that problem, hopefully. That's still just a stopgap, though. Anybody that's going to be able to really hard deal with your oh, onslaught, of course. Yeah, it's that's just really something, the counter It's something that I I'm tried to soften the blow. Right. For counter lists, so so you're very front end, you're you're very front end loaded here, coming from the top, the bottom, and the middle, of course, and you're looking to just wipe them out really quick before they really know what's going on, and then when they figure that out, you're going to come out from the bottom, and if they actually shoot back, down comes the ball sack of doom, yeah. and you hope that's going to handle it. And but, all the while, I hope that these big monsters are distracting from the thirty gargoyles, yeah. which are grabbing objectives <laughs> the whole game. Because so who cares there. about the little bats? Yeah, those are guys, those are going to be the least of our worries. Um, how many psychers are on that list, by the way? So, oh god, it's so much because the swarm lords a psyker, the hive tyrants a psyker, the uh, zone thropes are psychers, uh, and let's think. Um, I think that actually covers it. That's yeah, that's, that's, it. that's that's three three psychers. But that's three sources of psychic shenanigans, which they know they yeah. know their own uh, discipline, but also they all know smite. So I I, I I'm looking forward to see the hive tyrant. Not be the gunboat that he is, but it, he still kind of has that. I mean, I'm, I build him rather than with the twin link devourers. I'm doing four sets of oh. uh, death spitters with slimers. So they do. They're a little more expensive, but they do a little more damage, and they have more AP. Okay. So I'm gonna see since I lost the rerolls from twin linking, yeah. uh, and I'm dealing out the same shots. Might as well try making him a little more meaningful. And shots. on that same notion, he's dishing out mortal wounds. Yeah, with yeah. his his with ability. His, with his headaches. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about this list. I'm really, really excited to bring this into 8th edition and uh, expand it a little because I've already got plans to uh, include a, uh, a set of Raveners Ooh. and a bunch of other really cool subterranean units. So I'm really That's excited about expanding this list a little more. So what's your before we go, what's your favorite part of this list? Uh, favorite part of this list is going to have to be uh, the Molochs and I think the Zone Throws. Yeah. Swarmlord, I haven't gotten a chance to play him in 8th edition. He very well may be my favorite. He's always been my favorite model. He's always got a place in my heart. But after seeing this list play in 5th, 6th, and 7th, I really like Molochs. And I'm really hoping that these giant tube, tube mouth worms are going to come up and, and do themselves justice in 8th edition. Well, I'm definitely eager to see this one come off of the paper and onto the tabletop. That's it for us. Once again, Jared, Gavin, and I'm Tom. We'll catch you next time here with Wartorn Creative.